Hi, I'm Tom Percival and welcome to my video for the... Oh, what is it? Virtual... Scottish, virtual Scottish Friendly Children's Book Talk. Okay. Hi, I'm Tom Percival and welcome to my video for the Virtual Scottish Friendly Children's Book Talk. So, first things first, I'm an author and an illustrator. Although, if I didn't do something to do with books, it would be a bit weird to be doing this video, being as it's a uh, virtual book tour. Anyway, a lot of my books explore different emotions. So Ruby's Worry looks at the idea of anxiety. Ravi's Raw covers the idea of anger and how we, uh, how we manage that emotion. Perfectly Norman is all about expressing yourself and being true to yourself. How to be you, essentially. And I've also got a new book, Misha Makes Friends, explores the idea of making friends and how it's not always quite as easy as it's made out to be. So I'm really interested in how and why we feel the way that we do. Because, you know, if you're always sad, if you're always frustrated, then you're not going to have a very enjoyable experience of life, which, after all, is pretty much what we all want. So that's why it's really important to understand why we feel the way that we do, to explore our emotions. If you feel bad, but can understand why you feel that way, then you can start to take steps to solve that problem. If you think about it that way, feeling angry or frustrated or upset isn't actually a bad thing, it's a useful thing. Our feelings can help to guide us through life in a smooth and hopefully happy, pleasant way. They're a tool we can use to help us make the right decisions and move in the right direction. But to be able to do that, we have to take the time to try to work out how and why we feel in the way that we do. We can use the way that we're feeling to help us make good decisions by asking three simple questions. How, why, and what? So that would be, how do I feel? Why do I feel that way? And what can I do to change that feeling? This can help you to stop feeling worried, angry, confused, or sad. For example, one day I might be feeling, you know, I might be feeling a bit low. So I could say to myself, how are you feeling? Well, you know, if I'm feeling low, then I know I'm probably feeling pretty sad. I could think, well, why? Why am I feeling this way? Well, it could be because I miss my friends. So what can I do about this? Well, I could phone one of my friends up or I could speak to a member of my family or something like that. And remember, however you're feeling, whether it's angry, frustrated, upset, sad, confused, it's okay to have any of those feelings. People often call things like sadness, frustration, anger, uh, they call them bad feelings, but they don't have to be bad feelings. You can think of them as useful feelings that can help to direct you to a happier place. The trick is to find somebody to talk to about these feelings. After all, it's always a lot easier to talk through your feelings with someone else than to try and work it out all on your own. So if you're feeling troubled by any of your feelings, please find someone you trust to talk to about how you're feeling. And hopefully they'll be able to help you work through those questions, how, why, and what, and you'll be able to start feeling, well, a bit better about things. And if there's no one around or you can't quite get to the bottom of why you're not feeling great, then here are a few general pointers that will help most people feel better in most situations. One, get outside. Being outside lifts your spirits and makes you feel good. So even if it's raining, it doesn't matter. Just throw on a coat and get outdoors. Two, get active. Of course, if your chosen sport is Olympic high diving, then it's gonna be tricky to do it from home. I mean, you could sort something out with your bath and uh, chair, but it's probably not gonna end well, so don't do that. Um, but you can always find something to do to keep yourself active. You can still do star jumps and push-ups. Or you could run laps of your living room. Last week, one of my kids walked a mile up and down the stairs. Three, make sure you get enough sleep. When we're tired, our brains try to stop us from taking unnecessary risks. So just try to think, if you're tired and feeling a bit low, it's just your body's way of trying to protect you and make sure that you get a good restful night's sleep. Four, do the things that you enjoy. So I like to make music. 
do exercise and go walking. All these things always cheer me up when I'm feeling a bit rubbish. Now, in my job as an illustrator, I draw lots of different characters with lots of different expressions. And there's one thing you can draw in your pictures that really helps to give your characters expression. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a clue. Any ideas? That's right, it's elbows. Elbows are hugely expressive. Look at this, there's a sad elbow. Um, and this is a happy elbow. Not really, it's eyebrows, of course. So I'm gonna head up to my studio and I'll show you how I would go about adding expression to a character using eyebrows. So first things first, yes, my desk is a mess. Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you just how much of a difference the eyebrows make to a picture. So let's start off with, uh, we'll draw, we'll draw a circle, okay? I'm gonna do three circles and then duplicate them and put them here. So we are gonna make all of these circles into faces. Okay, so we'll put another two circles into each one. I'm fairly sure that everyone can draw a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just a sort of wobbly one would do. And then on the outside of each circle, we'll do two half circles. And again, if you can draw a circle, I'm fairly sure you can draw a half circle. So we do this like this. Now we can draw a little triangle. And so the little triangle will be the nose. We can make these a little bit more exciting by choosing an exciting colour for some hair. So we've got that. Let's give our characters a direction to look in. So these characters on the top, we will have them looking over towards the left. And the characters on the bottom will have looking over towards the right. Or <laughs> is it the wrong way around? So on the top characters, we're going to give them all little smiles. And the ones on the bottom, we will all give little sad mouths. So the top ones look more or less the same, and the bottom ones look more or less the same also. And here is the exciting bit. So what we can do is with our eyebrows, on the top left, if you have the eyebrows going up a bit, your character looks happy. But if you have your eyebrows slanting downwards, then your character looks mischievous, a bit naughty. And then, if you have your eyebrows on the character going right up, then your character looks a little bit nervous, like they think they're okay, but maybe everything's right, maybe it's not. In a similar way, on the bottom, if you have the eyebrows going up and the mouth going down, your character looks sad. If you have the eyebrows slanting down heavily and the sad mouth, your character looks angry. And if you have the eyebrows going up, then your character looks really, really sad. So there you go. A few simple tips on how very subtle changes in your drawings can give your characters a lot more expression. So that's it from me. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching my video for the virtual Scottish-friendly children's book tour.